right, good morning. It is Monday and today is your day to get whatever you want. How does that sound? I'm Anna Gibbs, this is your dose, your weekly dose of mojo. It's a pleasure to be here with you every Monday morning. Thank you for joining me. Hello to everyone out there on Facebook. I'm excited to talk to you this morning because I want to share with you some, some thoughts around how you really can have whatever you want. And whatever you desire out of life is within reach if you're willing to set a goal and create a plan to get there. And so I am going to focus the next couple of weeks on the topic of goal setting, but more importantly, goal achieving, um, because we can set a lot of goals, but the key is to make sure that we are achieving what we set out to do. And I think this is an important month to do that. I know it's going to be a busy month for uh, many of us with the holiday season upon us. And it's also going to be a new year before we know it, <clears throat> right? We're just a few weeks away from 2023. And of course, that's the um, time when we are all looking to the future and reflecting on what we've accomplished this past year. And for most of us, we're setting goals for 2023. And a lot of us have probably done it already. Um, but, but here's the thing. Um, so many of you who are part of the Mojo tribe, uh, own businesses or, you know, you have a career that is really focused on achieving results. And so it's probably uh, very common for you to set goals and, and look at a strategic plan to get there in your career and in your business. Um, and maybe for some of you, it's, it's not. So um, we'll start there. We're going to talk about your career and we're going to talk about your business goals. But this is really a conversation to open you up to understanding how you can set goals and should set goals in every area of your life. And the reason for that is because those individuals who set goals, and uh, and of course we can break down what happens after that, right? If you write your goals down, you're, you're more likely to achieve them. I believe that the, the latest research is showing that when individuals set goals and then write them down, you are almost 80% more likely to hit the goal because it's an, it's been written out. And uh, that's because the goal becomes external, right? And because, uh, you know, when we have all of our thoughts here in our mind and not really on paper where we can look at it and, and then get strategic about it, if it remains a thought, our thoughts are constantly being affected by our emotions. And so, you know, if you think about how many times your feelings change throughout the day, uh, depending on what's happening around you, your goal can be very susceptible to your feelings. And so one minute you think that you can conquer the goal and take on the world, and the next minute you're thinking that you should scrap and go back to the drawing board, or, you know, it was too big anyway, or I can't, you know, do it because I don't have this, and I can't do it because I don't know that, and right, the whole story starts. And so when it's uh, written down and it's outside of you, it's protected from a lot of those emotions. So when we write our goals down, we're more likely to achieve them. And then when we look at that, you know, there are some other things that really help us achieve success with goal setting that I want to talk to you about this morning. And um, when we achieve the goal, when we achieve the goal, I believe we can live bigger lives, right? So remember, there's a difference between being a goal setter and a goal achiever, right? Just setting the goal is, is the first step but we wanna be able to achieve the goal. And when we achieve our goals, we feel great, right? We feel like we've accomplished something. Our life has certainly changed or grown in the process of achieving the goal. The goal itself has changed us because a goal is never about where you are. It's about where you wanna be, right? So you've seen progress, you've seen advancement, you've seen some, some great results through achieving your goal. So those are great positive things. And it, it tells us, right, it talks to our subconscious mind and it tells us that we should continue to do it. We should set more goals because it feels so good, right? So um, all, all of those, those uh, results then have us thinking bigger and have us setting new goals. And so goal achievers live bigger lives, 
right? Because as you set goals and, and you continue to achieve them, you tend to have more accomplishments. You tend to have greater experiences. You tend to see bigger results. And so it's it's that progress that helps us to then just build on, on more progress. So we get to see more, do more, have more, be more. And so I feel that, you know, we live greater, bigger lives. And, you know, so for me, right, this is my experience for me. Um, I think there was part of, of my DNA that was very programmed to be a goal setter and achiever. And many of you can probably relate to that. Um, I can remember being very young and, and thinking about what I wanted to do or what I wanted to have. And, and setting goals is, is really, you know, how I operate from everything to, you know, home projects to great big business ventures. So um, being a goal setter and a goal achiever is is really the first step in starting to understand more of your own potential and realizing that you know starting right now today this morning as we're talking about this there's probably something that popped into your head there's probably some thought that you just had in the last few minutes around a goal that you would like to set and achieve write it down in case you forget or in case you decide that you know you have a different feeling about it soon but there's there's something that you want to be able to achieve and so it's so important for you to know that through your your ability to set and achieve goals you can have whatever you want you can live a bigger greater life now you know some of you may be you know struggling right now with different things that are in front of you, different circumstances. And I totally understand that. And I've been there myself, trust me. Um, but remember, you are not your circumstance. What is happening at this very moment is happening, but it's happening probably for you, not just to you. So in other words, when I say it's happening for you, it's, it's giving you an opportunity to learn something and it's giving you an opportunity to make some different choices. And I'm not saying the choices are simple. And I'm not saying that the choices are all clear right now, but believe me, you have choices. And so you have an opportunity to work your way out of whatever circumstance you might be in. And, and so one goal that you set could be the first step in that, right? So it could be an opportunity for you to start climbing up out of that situation. So I believe that goals are the way to get everything that you want a little bit smarter, a little bit faster, and a little bit easier. Because after you set your goal, your intention, it's about looking at how to get there. And so it is about building a strategic plan. So we'll talk about that part of this process maybe uh, next week. Uh, but that's really the next step is figuring out what you have to do to get there, right? Step by step, breaking it down. Because a lot of times the goals that we set are, are big, right? We're looking at maybe a goal that's going to take the entire year to achieve um, or several months. And so we want to break it down. We want to chunk it down so that it is something that we can not only accomplish, but really um, you know, see progress, you know, along the way. And so that strat that strategy or strategic plan is going to be really important. The other thing that's really important about setting goals is your mindset. And it's about knowing that you have this, this realistic goal, you have an attainable goal, right? We've all heard the acronym for goal setting before, and that's SMART, which is um, specific, your goal should be very clear, very specific, not very vague, um, because your subconscious needs very clear direction. Uh, so you wanna be very clear and very specific. It should also be measurable, right? So how much by when? So you're gonna create um, a way to chart your progress and, and account be accountable to it, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Uh, and then it should be attainable. So, you know, it should be something that is, is possible for you to accomplish. Now, it might mean you have to stretch. It might mean that it's possible you might have to learn something new in the process of getting there, uh, but it's still within your, your ability to do so. So it's attainable, right? So it's okay to, to say that my goal might be something that's going to stretch me, uh, push me, you know, encourage me to do things differently. That's important. Uh, and by nature, it should, 
right? Because remember, our goal is not about where we are, it's about where we want to go. And so in the process of taking us from where we are to where we want to go, it would make sense that we would have to do things differently, or we may have to learn something new or apply a new system or be more purposeful in the journey towards the goal, right? So Again, we're just reviewing the acronym for goal setting. I know I've packed a lot in here for you this morning. Um, so SMART, right, is the acronym. It's specific, measurable, attainable. And then the R is, is realistic, right? So again, we wanna make sure that we're not saying we wanna go from zero to 100 overnight. We have to make sure that the goal is realistic and that we have, again, the right strategy to get there. And then, of course, the T is timely or, or time sensitive. So, again, that relates back to how much by when. Uh, and also, really, I think it, it relates to a sense of urgency. That, in other words, setting this goal matters to you. And so you want to accomplish the goal and you want to have a certain amount of urgency around it and making sure that you are putting time and attention to it every day, uh, that you're tracking your results, that you're being um, you know, focused on, or purposeful on, on achieving the goal. So that's the acronym SMART that might help you with some of your goal setting. Now, I mentioned something just a second ago that is important to talk about, and that's accountability. So I believe this, this is about inspiring you to think about the goals that you wanna set for 2023. And again, not to limit that to just your job or your career. Um, I want to encourage you to set goals in every area of your life, right? So, you know, we're talking about setting goals for yourself, not just professionally, but maybe personally about where you want to grow and develop personally. Setting goals for yourself financially. Setting goals for your relationship and being intentional about where you want the relationships in your life to grow or go. Uh, setting goals around your health. Maybe, you know, some of you have weight loss goals or fitness goals or, you know, uh, improving something about your health, quitting smoking, whatever it might be. Um, and so those are the areas in your life that you want to set goals. Uh, and also don't forget to set goals for fun and recreation, right? Where do you want to travel next year? Where do you want to go with your family? What experiences do you want to have? What experiences do you want to give, right? So it's just so exciting to look at all the areas of your life and you can use a model like the wheel of life exercise, which by the way, you can find on the Mojo Facebook group in the file section, you can download that uh, and take a look at all the different perspectives and areas of your life. And, and first, if you're gonna do that, you know, with the wheel of life exercise, I think this is a great way for you to get started with setting goals is to take a moment and assess where you are right now. Take a moment and be real with yourself and assess how fulfilled you feel in each area of your life. And what you're going to do is rate that on a scale of one to 10. And so any area that you feel, you know, you've given yourself a lower score in is certainly speaking to you, right? Is certainly asking for your attention. And that's where you may want to start sending some goals right away and ask yourself, not necessarily what will move you from a three to a 10, but maybe what will move you from a three to a five or a three to a seven. It's okay to take it in, in incremental steps. Of course, the ultimate goal is to feel that you're at a 10, um, but we don't have to do it overnight, right? Because that wouldn't be smart. So uh, that's something that you may wanna do right now is, is that wheel of life exercise as a prelude to knowing what your goals need to be, right? Because then you can, again, as I said, ask yourself, what, what goal could I set that would move the needle forward that would make me feel like I'm really growing in this area? And so then you can create goals for each of those uh, parts of your life. And look, I get it. You know, this, this takes time. This takes a lot of thought. This takes a lot of intentionality. And it should also take some accountability. And that's where I wanted to go next with this conversation. Um, and so I believe that while this is your vehicle to have what you want, there can be things that get in your way, right? There can be roadblocks on the journey. And I think two things that get in the way for most people um, in achieving their goals are a lack of accountability and a lack of consistency. So I just wanna talk about that too this morning because I want you to be aware of the things that can show up that sabotage you or get, get in front of you and that could divert you from, from the, the path to your goal. And so let's talk about accountability first. I have to tell you guys, this is the secret sauce accountability. And 
being a very independent person, <laughs> being a very um, uh, driven or, or, or someone who's a driver and, and, and focused to achieve things and likes change and likes to be in control of her destiny. Accountability was something that I misunderstood for a long time. And because of that, I pushed back on it. Um, and because of that, I wasn't always open or receptive to accountability because I think I assumed it was something more like micromanaging me and that's not true. And I don't know how many of you can relate to that. Let me know, you know, talk to me through the chat. I love seeing your comments. Um, and I don't know if you can relate to that, but I will tell you that accountability is your opportunity to have what you want because accountability is really a process of analyzing what you're doing in comparison to the goal. And accountability, true accountability cannot be done alone. You, I know that, I know so many of us, right, who, who are, you know, driven and focused on achieving and building and wanting things. We think we can hold ourselves accountable, but we can't, okay? We just can't because again, our thoughts are shaped by our feelings. And on a day that we feel like we can do anything, we're going to create some crazy goal and we're going to just think that we can do whatever it is and we're not going to get as strategic as we could be. Um, and then on a different day or in a different hour, when we're feeling in an, in an opposite way, we're feeling frustrated or we're feeling, you know, even defeated at times, we're going to then try to say that whatever we're working on uh, could be done tomorrow. I need a break. I need this. I need that. Um, and so we can either be too hard on ourselves. We can be too optimistic. We can also be too lenient. We can just, you know, make a lot of reasons for why we're not on track and, and then, you know, tell ourselves because we're so optimistic that we're going to get back on track tomorrow. I mean, does this sound familiar, right? So we need to have an accountability partner. And the, the, the key to this is the right partner. So when you're doing that wheel of life exercise and you're setting goals in all these different areas of your life, realize that the, the perfect accountability partner for you in your career or your business is maybe not the same accountability partner you should have for your spiritual goals or for your financial goals, right? So we may need to have many partners uh, and, and your accountability partner could be a coach, could be could be a consultant, could be a peer, could be uh, someone who um, you know you identify as as someone who. And here's the criteria for a good accountability partner: uh, they don't necessarily need to be in the same industry with you, but they need to have a good understanding of what you're trying to accomplish. So they need to to know and be able to process what it is that you're looking to do. Uh, if they have blazed the trail before you. And they're kind of on some a different level than what you're trying to accomplish. That that could be good because they have some experience and insight about what you're trying to accomplish. Um, they have to be. You have to have an agreement with this person. You have to have a conversation, an expectations conversation about what accountability needs to look like. And accountability is is best done weekly. And maybe it takes 10, 15 minutes. This is not a long conversation. It could be done over the phone. It could be done on a Zoom call. Um, and your accountability partner needs to ask you a couple questions, really. And that's it. And here are the questions. They need to ask you, what was the goal last week? What, what did you set out to accomplish last week, right? What was the goal last week? And everything that you're doing weekly should just be a, a chunking down of what needs to happen to get to that yearly goal. Right. So you can chunk the yearly goal down into monthly goals and then monthly goals into weekly goals. And that's the focus in the accountability session. And so your accountability partner is going to say, OK, what what was it that you set out to do last week? And they already know this because you talked about it the week before, because it's part of the last question. So the first question is, what did you set out to accomplish last week? You you would then go over what that was. Second question, how did you do? So that's where you're going to be able to share your results and whether you're on track or not. And if you're not on track, the question should be, okay, so what could you have done differently that would have gotten you to the results that you were looking for, right? Or what got in your way of getting to the result you were looking for? 
Very important question for you to be able to look at so you can make modifications so that you can stay on track the next week and the week after. If you were on track, your accountability partner should ask you, great, so what do you think made that possible? Like, what are some things that you're doing really well that is keeping you on track? You need to connect to that because that, again, is going to be the way you program your thinking to stay on track in the future. So now the question is, based on the results you just got, what needs to happen this week? What are your goals for this week? So you're reviewing that ahead of time. So then that way, when you come back to the, to the conversation next week, whatever it was that you said you were doing this week becomes the first question. How did you do? Okay, so now, now the accountability partner is going to say, okay, great. So what are your goals for this week? Perfect. Last question. Is there anything that could get in your way of achieving this goal? Because we've got to be aware that there are things that show up that get in our way. Maybe it was something that you just shared with your partner a minute ago about why you weren't on track this past week. And so that's an accountability session. 10, 15 minutes. It's not a long conversation, but it's an important conversation. And I think that when there's a lack of accountability, when there is not someone that you can really get into that conversation with, it is very easy for us to get off track and allow that to snowball. And it also becomes very easy for us to get in a mindset of believing that the reasons why we're not on track are valid. And most times they're not. So the accountability partner can help you see through the forest, right? See through the trees in the forest and help you to understand how your own behavior might need to change to get you back on track. So I think that's one of the reasons why we don't achieve our goals is because we don't have accountability around them. The second reason why I don't think some of us achieve our goals is consistency. We're just not doing what we need to be doing enough. And I think that when you set a goal and if you can get into some strategic thinking, you're able to identify the activities, the actions that you need to get to the goal right? But then the trouble is that over time, we stop being consistent on those activities. So we do it sometimes, but we don't do it all the time, right? So what do I mean by that? Okay, let's take something that most people understand, weight loss, right? So we start strong. We come out of the gate fast and furious. We're clear. We want to lose 25 pounds. We know we have to monitor what we're eating all day. We know we need to change the foods that we're keeping in the house. We're going to change the way we shop. We're going to change the way we cook. We're going to eat clean. We're going to eat healthy. So we know approximately the calories that we're going to have in a day. We're going to move our body more. Sometimes the goals are really specific around exercise. Maybe it's just movement, whatever it is, right? You come out strong, you know what you need to do. And then after I don't know, depends on who you are, a week, two weeks, a month, six weeks, we start trailing off, right? And we start to change what we're doing and we stop being consistent around the activities that we know will get us to the end goal. So those are the two things that will keep you from hitting your goal, a lack of accountability and a lack of consistency. So as you set goals for 2023, I'm going to ask you to think about Who's your accountability partner in those important areas of your life? And what can you do to maintain consistency? See, the accountability partner will help with that immediately, right? Because they're, they're asking you questions around what you're doing and what's working and what's not working. What will you do differently? And when you are honest with your accountability partner, which is a given, right? We have to be honest. Uh, that's part of the expectations conversation, right? Um, you, you will reveal the things that you are not doing and, and, and you'll see where consistency uh, is becoming a problem. And um, so I'm just gonna backtrack a little bit, as I said to you about the expectations conversation. A couple of things about that. So remember you're choosing someone who is the right fit for this goal. And you also want to have an expectations conversation about what this looks like. And so you want to, in that conversation, give your accountability partner permission to hold you accountable. And you want to have a conversation with them about what that looks like, right? So you want to be clear with them about how important this goal is and that you really need them to keep your feet to the fire on it and that you want them to ask you questions. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to yell at you. It doesn't mean that they're going to be abusive to you. It just means that you've given them permission to be 
to, to, to be clear and to be strong and to not let you off the hook, right? Because your goal matters. And so that's a conversation you need to have ahead of time and establish those ground rules. And, um, you know, if you, and also that you're going to be honest, right? That you are not going to withhold information from them, that you're going to be honest with them about your progress or lack thereof and whatever it is that's going on. So that, that's what I mean by an expectations conversation around your accountability partner. So I trust you found a lot of information in this one today uh, and that some of you just needed to hear this at this moment. So um, I'm excited that this is an opportunity for you to set some goals. Uh, just to review what we've talked about this morning, you may wanna start with the wheel of life exercise first and assess how you feel about different areas of your life. And then when you, you know, you'll see on the exercise and, and again, you'll find this in the uh, Facebook group, Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. And there's um, uh, this, this um, tool in the files section and there's instructions on it. You're gonna just ask yourself realistically, like what would make my life a 10 in this area? And, and if it's not that, then where am I, right? So you're gonna fill in like how full you feel. And so then you're gonna ask yourself, the next question is, okay, so what, would, what could make it a 10 right now? Or what, or as I mentioned earlier, if you're only feeling that you're like a three, maybe you just wanna to get to five and then seven and then 10. So you're gonna ask yourself what those goals look like. And so once you have these goals set in different areas of your life, this is where you get to work on your strategic plan. And then you use that SMART acronym to figure out how specific you, you can be, how measurable, how attainable and realistic it is, and, and create a sense of urgency around when you want to get there. And then you're going to build out that, that strategic plan by looking at activities and actions that will get you to the goal. And now you're going to look at who's my accountability partner here? Who is the right person that I can share the goal with? Can I, do I hire a coach? Maybe you need to hire a weight loss coach or a fitness coach. Maybe you need to hire a financial coach or advisor. Maybe you need to hire a business coach or a life coach, right? So you're going to figure out what you need to get to those goals. And, and, and if it's important enough to you, you want to be purposeful with that. So the accountability partner is huge because that's what's going to build the consistency so that you can get there. So next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the strategic plan part of it. I'll share some ideas with you on that. Whether it's home remodeling or starting a new business, it doesn't matter. The, the plan will help you no matter what the goal is. So I'm excited about that. And if there's anything you heard today that you would like to talk to me about, if you have questions about, you know, I do this um, Monday Morning Mojo as my gift to you. But again, you know I'm a coach. So if I can help you in any area of your business or life, um, and you want to talk more about what it might be like to coach with me, feel free to reach out. Um, and I'm happy to have that conversation. And, uh, or if you want to just, you know, talk a little bit about anything that I, I brought up in today's session, and, and if it would help you to get some clarity on some things, just reach out. I'm happy to have a conversation with you anytime. So thanks again. I know you found value in this, and I believe that this is a great place for you to be. So thanks for, for showing up when you do every time. And uh, keep sharing this with your friends. Put this out there to them. Uh, and uh, let's continue to grow this community. So have a, have a lot of fun doing this goal setting exercise, uh, because this is your opportunity to have whatever you want. So go out and get it. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks so much. Appreciate you.